What's up, guys? Welcome to the first ever Office Hours with your boy Network Prodigy. Office Hours is basically a way for me to open up my office to you guys. You guys come into my office, you have a seat at my desk, and I pretty much just drop all the knowledge in the game that I have to you guys. So welcome to the very first session. I'm glad you guys are here, man. I see the support from my channel has grown. I keep seeing my subscribers list grow every single day. My goal is to get to a thousand subscribers by the end of the year. You guys think I can do that? You think you can help me get my channel to a thousand subscribers? Well, all you gotta do, if you wanna see more content like the one you watching right now, just hit that subscribe button, man, and hit that notification bell. Thank you guys for rocking with me. I know it's been a while since I put out some content, but you guys have stayed loyal to me, man, and I really appreciate that. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into our very first session. Now, we're going to talk about multiple instance spanning tree. This is something that somebody asked me to talk about on a previous video, which I do want you guys to know that I do see your comments. So there's anything, and I mean anything, that you guys would like for me to talk about, let me know, and I got you. See, most of the time, I just like to put out videos just dropping game to you guys about certain topics that may be on the exam. But I can always make videos about topics that you guys want to hear. So don't be afraid to leave me a message in the comment section letting me know what topics you like for me to talk about. So let's talk about MST, which is multiple instance, and I hope I spell instance right, spanning tree. Okay, that's going to be the topic today, or what we call MST. Now, in order to understand multiple instance spanning tree, I want you to take everything you know about spanning tree, kind of put it to the side mainly in regards to Cisco per VLAN spanning tree. Okay, I only want you to focus on legacy spanning tree and rapid spanning tree because multiple instance spanning tree is an extension to rapid spanning tree and you're gonna see exactly what I mean in a second. So I want you to take your knowledge of per VLAN spanning tree and kind of put it to the side. So let's take a moment and let's just talk about spanning tree in general as a review. So let's just say we have switch one and then we have switch two and then we have switch three. Now we know that these switches are going to be interconnected in a redundant fashion. Now we know that if we don't run spanning tree, we can run or we can have layer two loops, right? Where switch one sends a frame to three, three sends it to two, two sends it to one and you kind of got this looping action going on, right? We don't want that to happen, so we run spanning tree. What spanning tree will do is pretty much build a tree where at the top of the tree, you have the root bridge. So one switch in the network is gonna be the root. Let's just say it's switch one. Now every other switch in the network has to determine the fastest way to get to the root. That's how the tree is built. So let's just say two is going in this direction because it's faster than going this direction and three is going in this direction. So that means that this link and this link make up the tree. This link right here is being blocked. And when you forward traffic, you have to forward traffic according to the tree. So that means that if two ever needs to send traffic to three, he has to follow the tree and go this way. Just like if three wants to send traffic to two, three has to follow the tree and go this way. So the tree kind of looks like this, where this is switch one, this is switch two, and this is switch three. This is your tree right here. Now when you're running legacy spanning tree or rapid spanning tree, the disadvantage is that this one tree is the tree for every single VLAN that is configured in your network. So it doesn't matter if it's VLAN 1, VLAN 500. If that traffic is trying to go from 2 to 3, it has to follow this tree. 
That's the path it has to follow. Well, the problem is you end up in a situation where the link between two and three never gets used. It never gets used. And imagine this isn't the only link in your network that doesn't get used. Depending upon how big your network is, you can have a bunch of links in your network that's not being used because spanning tree has built its one and only tree and some links are just not part of the tree so they never get used. So you pretty much have links that are being wasted. All the bandwidth on those links are not even being used. They're just kind of sitting there and you're wasting your bandwidth. This is why Cisco implemented their per VLAN spanning tree to get around that problem. But if you're running or if you have like Dell switches in your network or you have Juniper switches, HP switches, they're not going to run per VLAN spanning tree because it's a Cisco only implementation. So that's where they came out with multiple instance spanning tree. What multiple instance spanning tree does is it allows you to run multiple instances of spanning tree at the same time on your switches. So instead of having one instance of spanning tree that every VLAN must use, you can have multiple instances running at the same time and you can assign VLANs to whatever instances you like. What this is going to do is allow you to use all the bandwidth in your network and not have certain links going unused. So let's kind of look at how that would look. So let's kind of redraw this out. I'm going to put it in black. And what I'm going to do is I like to color code things to make it simple for you. So let's kind of draw the network out again. So we got switch one. We got switch two. And we got switch three. And all the switches are going to be interconnected. Now, when you enable MST or multiple instance spanning tree on your network, you automatically start with one instance, which is zero. So the very first instance you're going to have is MST instance zero. Now, MST instance zero, <coughs> excuse me, is going to have its own tree that's independent from any other instance, which means MST zero is going to have its own root. Let's just say it's switch one and we'll put him in red. So switch one is going to be the root for instance zero. And let's just say that switch two is going this way to get to switch one and switch three is going this way to get to switch one which means this link between two and three never gets used. So if you look at the tree, for instance, zero, it kind of looks like this, where this is one, this is two, and this is three. That's the tree for instance zero. By default, every single VLAN belongs to instance zero when you turn on multiple instance spanning tree. So if you just turn on MST and you don't do anything, it's gonna operate like rapid spanning tree. You only have one instance of spanning tree running. What you wanna do is you want to create another instance of spanning tree. So let's just say we create MST instance one. Now since MST instance one is a separate tree from instance zero, it means we can place the root bridge elsewhere. So we're gonna put him in green. Let's just say that we want the root bridge for instance one to be switch two. So now this is the root. Now switch one and switch three have to determine, well, what's the fastest way to get to switch two? Well, one says, I'm gonna go this way. Three says, I'm gonna go this way. So now inside of instance one, the link between one and three is not being used. So the tree kind of looks like this where this is two, this is three, and this is one. Now, you can create as many instances as the box allows. So if I wanted to, I can go create another instance. Let's just say I wanna create MST instance two. And just like instance one has its own tree, well, so does instance two, which means that 
you can place the root bridge wherever you want. Let's just say for instance two, we want switch three to be the root. Now switch one and switch two have to determine what's the fastest way to get to three. So maybe one is going this way, two is going this way, and maybe this link between one and two gets blocked. But it's only getting blocked for instance three. It may not be blocked for instance, well not instance three, instance two. So it may not be blocked for instance zero and instance one, but it is blocked for instance number two. So the tree will look something like this, where this is one, this is three, this is two. Now all you will have to do is then tell the switches what VLANs belong to what instance. And you gotta make sure that all the switches agree on this. So you gotta say, okay, well, I'm gonna give the first 1,000 instances or the first 1,000 VLANs to instance zero. So that's one through 1,000. The next 1,000 are gonna go to instance one. So that's gonna be 1,001 through 2,000. And then every other VLAN is gonna belong to instance number two. So that's 2001 through 4094. Kind of like that, right? You just tell the switch what instance belongs to or what VLAN belongs to what instance. Now here's the deal, okay? By default, every VLAN already belongs to instance zero. So whatever VLANs you don't assign to some other instance automatically go to zero. So you don't have to assign these VLANs to zero, they already belong to zero. You just assign these VLANs to instance one, these VLANs to instance two, and then the remaining VLANs will stay with instance zero. But what you're gonna notice is that the tree for every instance is different. See the tree for instance zero goes this way, instance one is this way, and two is this way. You're gonna notice that it's certain links that are being used in zero that's not being used in one. For example, the link between one and three is being used here, but it's not being used here. Or the link between two and three is not being used here, but it is being used here. What this does is now gives you more efficient use of your bandwidth. You don't have links in your network that are just sitting there dormant, not doing anything for you. This is what multiple instance spanning tree is all about. You're gonna see it's oddly similar to Cisco's per VLAN spanning tree. The difference is though, with Cisco, you have a spanning tree instance for every VLAN. So if I'm on a Cisco switch and I have 1,000 VLANs, that means I have 1,000 spanning tree instances, which you may not want to be running 1,000 spanning tree instances on your switch. So then you enable multiple instance spanning tree. You create however many instances of spanning tree you want to run, and then you just assign VLANs to those instances. What it does is it cuts down on the number of instances you're running. So if you have a thousand VLANs running, that means you have a thousand spanning tree instances. Well, what you can do is you can configure three instances, assign maybe 300 here, 300 here, the other 400 here, and instead of having a thousand instances of spanning tree, you only have three. That's what multiple instance spanning tree is all about. It's pretty much an extension to rapid spanning tree, allowing you to have multiple instances, multiple trees, instead of just having one instance that every VLAN is going to use. Because if you only have one instance of spanning tree running, it means you only have one tree that's been built and certain links in your network are not going to be utilized and your bandwidth is going to be wasted. So that's why you run multiple instance spanning tree. Instead of having one instance of spanning tree, you have however many you create. Then you just assign the VLANs to the instances and there you go. Now that's just a basic introductory into multiple instance spanning tree because it can get complicated. 
because multiple instance spanning tree is backwards compatible with and I'm not sure why my notifications are coming up but it's backwards compatible with rapid spanning tree and legacy spanning tree but it kind of behaves differently when this switch right let me just get my marker here when you have switch one who is running MST then you have switch two who can't support MST so he's just running legacy spanning tree it gets kind of complicated so I can say that for future videos but I just wanted you to have a basic understanding of how MST operates and why we would want to use multiple instance spanning tree so that's going to conclude this session of office sessions I hope you guys enjoyed it if you did be sure to smash that like button it definitely helped the YouTube algorithm share this video with anybody you feel will benefit from it and if this is your first time visiting the channel be sure to hit that subscribe button remember my goal is to get to a thousand subscribers and I'll tell you what if you guys get me to a thousand subscribers I'm going to do a giveaway well and I'm not gonna mention what the prize is but I'll do a giveaway all you got to do is get me to a thousand subscribers and I'm gonna do that giveaway but thank you guys for attending this session remember I do see your comments so if there's anything and I mean anything that you would like to see me talk about let me know and I got you until then you guys take care and I know it's the weekend so go enjoy your weekend man you guys take care